to engage. You can't really poke them out before they can engage on you. Well, we said it coming into this at SKT, or that Jhenner rather would have to adapt the most with 5.5, and we saw it hurt him a bit in game number one. You know, what's going to happen in game two? Picks and bans time, and there's the Anivia ban against Faker, just not wanting to deal with it. Wow. Lulu again banned here. If I was SKT, I guess I wouldn't be as worried about that, even though, you know, Jhenner, uh, SKT with Faker in the mid lane doesn't play that much Lulu. Yeah. Certainly not a specialty of Marin, so I understand. But even so, that more utility-oriented laner may actually serve SKT well. Zareth also banned out once again. Yeah, so Maokai smart. available, they will probably take it first. Yep. And with Rek'Sai banned as well, might as well take that Maokai away Callista's from Marin. Callista is up. That's true. Oh, wow. They gave away Callista. And it looks like SKT is not going to hesitate to pick that up immediately. Will we see the Jarvan instead of the Sejuani, though? Do you feel like that's a little bit dangerous? I mean, Callista can really add a lot of damage into a team that's been hit with a Sejuani ult. Yeah, there think, we go. Yeah, I think that's yeah. much better. I agree with you. And yeah. Sejuani, Callista will be the grab. So what is the answer to this Callista? Callista has been proven to be such a lane bully that pretty much means Jyn is going to have to lane swap unless they think they have an answer. Well, Jyn knew they were giving this Callista over to SK Telecom, so you don't do that without a plan. Graves could be part of it. Wow, going for another burst AD. Interesting. Yeah. Not sure about this. Well, if SKT just, you know, craps a bunch of tanks too. You're not going to have a backline to blow up with collateral damage. It might get a little bit tough again. You have to believe that's their plan. Yeah, I guess so. But, you know, watch Faker just play mid Shogath or something like that, you know? Well, he's been playing in solo queue, so he yep. very easily could take that away. Or Urgot for that matter, too. Uh, what the what? Is it Cloud Templar troll or is it legit? This is the question we have to ask ourselves at 5.5. I think they're going to do a pick comp. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, wow. Oh. Switching up at the last minute. Looks like it's going to be Jarvan instead. I'm sad. Yep. You know, a Mumu Skarner, though, not as bad in 5.5. Potentially viable. And SKT may go ahead and grab that trundle this time around. It worked pretty well for Trace. I was wondering if Marin had this in his pocket or not as to whether he was going to be able to play it because yeah. having that Maokai Trundle matchup, you have so much pressure. Ha I mean, Hecarim at least can fight back with Trinity Force. Maokai really can't in the late game. Well, Trundle isn't exactly the most mechanically demanding champion. So this if is you, true. If you know the theory, you should be able to pick him up pretty easily. This is a good point. He's more of a more of a thinking man's champion, you know? <laughs> A little bit less uh, less quick on the fingers, a little bit heavier on the brain. That's my kind of champion, Doa. That's right. You like the trundle? <laughs> yep. Well, I certainly, like the... I certainly am a mechanical nightmare, so yes, that's pretty much all I can do. That's why you play Gangplank, right? <laughs> Build crit items and walk up and click on people. Oh, wow. Gnar. Really? Well, you can set up a Gnar ult really easily with Szechuan ult, mm. but... Hecarim, okay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yep. Instead of taking Thresh for Wolf... Team Ghost for SKT. <laughs> Thresh, Hecarim, Callista. Time for Jhin to play some Ghostbusters. That's right. We need a Ghostbusters Grave skin. That actually wouldn't be too bad. Oh, Rise would be interesting here. That would actually add a lot of late game punch, but the, uh, oh man, Jhin oh, don't do this again. I don't know, man. I mean, this team again, you just... They have even less damage now that they have a Maokai in the top lane if they actually go with the Lissandra. Uh, you can see him yes. agonizing over it. I think the Karthus is a, a stronger pick. Safer. And I think safe is what Jyn Air needs. Yeah, you have good primary engage for Karthus to follow up from. SKT, not the best at kiting. Now, is he going to be able to get in on that Kalista, though? Well, that's kind of the trick, right? I mean, you would theoretically be able to do that with Lissandra, but I think just the damage from Requiem late game is going to be pretty helpful. So what is Faker going to play? Also, they have good hard CC in the side lanes, a good burst here too. So yeah. uh, Chaser has good ganking targets that he can select. You know, I mean, top we, and bot. we could just see a lot of engage onto uh, yeah, this Karthus. He's been playing it a lot in solo queue. Yeah, he's been playing it a lot in solo queue. He's already got the... Uh, Ghost loaded up, so I imagine this is going to be a Vlad pick in the end. Does have that strong sustained damage. Can dodge the uh, the Requiem as well, but He's just... it, it's a it's not the greatest pick against Jarvan is the thing, because you can yeah. really bottle Vlad up in there. 
He's just uh, mad that one of the team Ghost members was taken by Janair. Karthus wasn't available, but it will be that mid Vlad for Faker. So Anivia into Vladimir. That's going to be the champions Faker's playing in our first two games tonight. And SKT with a pretty scary composition. I think Janair, this is a good adaptation, though. They go for the Karthus this game. Yep. Try for something that will have a little bit more damage late. Uh, very true. It's all a matter of that Karthus getting in, though. And SKT has a lot of good ways to prevent that from happening. Yeah, Figures only ever played one Vladimir game as well. So this will be number two. 1-0 mm -hmm. so far. But we knew that this was a possibility alongside the Cho'Gath. And with this really tanky meta, I mean, we got to see some more of these uh, autoing ADs that really have more presence in the late game. That's, we really start to have seeing that to, to have to start seeing that in order to bust the tank line here. Yeah, you really wonder what Pilot's going to do in the late game here, and it's. I think the answer is going to be probably not much. Well, Bang also with the Callista builds that we've been seeing with Bloodthirster first is also potentially not yeah. going to be doing much. That's true. That's true. But if he picks up the Runins later on, at least he'll be able to get a bit of AOE. Well, Maybe. if he's lucky, it's a lot of AOE coming in that he has to worry about as well, and he has to get in pretty tight in terms of range in order to get those abilities off. So well, it'll whenever, be a struggle for the AD carries, that's for sure. Whenever it's a tanky meta, it's always tough on the carries, but let's see if Janair can tie it up. It's time to get into game number two. Janair trying to tie things up against SK Telecom here in a pretty important match when it comes to seeding for the playoffs. Baker starting boots this game, hoping to dodge some of those late wastes and just farm his way up. Yeah, makes sense. Jay once again on the ante. Janair has the very strong possibility to uh, get some kills in the early game here. They have the composition to do it, certainly. They can punish all of the lanes pretty much. Especially if Faker's flash is down. That Cataclysm, Jarvan is really good against uh, against Vladimir. Well, that's kind of the issue though, right? Is Janair has been able to get kills in the early game. They've been able to get those leads, and they just haven't been able to close it out when it comes to these matches. We saw it against the GE Tigers. We saw it in game one just now. I think SKT knows exactly what they need to do to uh, beat Janair. Yeah, that said, Janair does have a little bit of a different agenda this game, and at least they pick something that scales a little bit harder and can deal more sustained damage in Karthus. So I don't think their composition holds that same level of weakness. It's not as vulnerable, but it's it's not so much about the comp, it's about the team, I think. Yeah. Well, we will see the lane swap. Not too terribly surprising. Don't want to be in the Callista lane. Don't want to have Hecarim beating up on Maokai early on. Yeah. Oh, and Faker we, just dodging right around those layways. Man, he just walked right up. Yeah, well, that's Faker for you. He only plays aggressively ever. Yeah. Uh, that's what's one of the things that's so difficult about playing him is look at what he does. Like, what? Who he does is, this with a level one Vladimir? He only have a Q. He's only been hit by like one. Especially in a lane swap. This is so dangerous. He's lane swapped against Maokai Annie. <laughs> well, he might pay for it because Trace and Chair about to come in. There's a flash stun. Faker gets exhausted as well. Chaser comes in. He's not getting out of this one. No way. First blood going to GBM and Faker. You know, he dodged those lay waste very nicely, <laughs> but you can't dodge the 1v4, can you, Faker? <laughs> That's why it's dangerous. <laughs> he, he went a little bit overboard there, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, Faker. Things Faker does. Good gank, though. And let's talk about how yeah. Jin Air did that. Because Jin Air against GE, they also had a really nice gank on Akuro. So how did they accomplish that? Well, uh, for those of you who weren't paying attention, Annie and Maokai went to Wolves. And then Annie helped Leash to get Trace level two. All the experience. Meanwhile, we saw Chaser start at red. So they actually collapsed in a pincer movement on the mid lane. Speaking of collapsing, Marin getting collapsed on right now by Jin Air. There's a knockup. He's in a bit of trouble now. No flash, of course. And that's another kill for Jin Air. So, well, here we go again. Jin Air's early games are so crisp. That was a great move. Yeah. And it was totally tailored to Faker. You know that Faker plays that aggressively. You do. He always does. 
And so in that situation, he's not going to expect people coming from both sides of the lane like that and having that Maokai. So really good level one from Jyn Air to set it up, and then they transition it immediately into another gank on the top side. Chaser basically hasn't jungled. <laughs> yeah, he's, pretty much. Well, he's gotten assists, so he's gotten gold at least. Yeah, he, he took out his red, and that's about it. Whenever you see Che on Annie, too, you know that mid lane gank is coming pretty fast. Like, Faker should have been aware that this was going to happen. Well, SKT held it together in the last game. It's only 800 gold down, and uh, but getting this Karthus rolling early can be scary. Sure can. I mean, a kill on the mid laner and a kill on the AD carry. You really can't ask for any more if you're Jin Air. And look at all the damage they have on this turret already, too. Uh -oh. Here comes Wolf and Bengi, though. They may have overstepped it. Pilot gets knocked back a bit, uses a quick draw. Nice flash play, double. Che is in big, big trouble. Looks like he's going to sacrifice his life for his carry, and Marin able to pick up the first kill for SK Telecom. And Pilot had his vision, uh, his ward available right there. They didn't have any vision in the. Oh, okay. Uh, right by the Krugs in order to see whether someone was coming into lane or not. So, played a bit too aggressively. Marin actually used his Hecarim Q right there, very well right there, getting past Che and then shoving him back. Yeah. But Che without that flash, the obvious target. Pilot also shouldn't have used his heal, but. I think that's a Hecarim E actually that knocks back. Oh, you're right, yes. It's, yeah. uh, it is easy. Oh, another flan to Pilot. He had to use his flash early on. Bengi needs to be careful. Oh, there we go. Knock up, knock up from Chaser. Yeah, he flashed into that one. Can Che get the stun? Uh, yes, he can, but Bengi gets out on the lantern. That was close a call there. EQ flash. So it doesn't do damage, but it does get the knock up. Yep. If you hit that. That's right. And they're not going to be able to convert it into anything. Trace. Wow. A tree is filled with spears. Absorbing a bunch of spears, but not subject to rend. He walks out of range. Yep. Oh, Bang getting a little bit of CS, but look at this, though. 44 to 28, so Bang able to farm quite well against this Maokai, of course. With all the action on the Jin Air side, it's cost uh, Pilot and CS a bit. He should be able to catch up pretty quickly, though. They've also been hard pushing this turret. Yeah, so that's true, too. It could even up if they do end up taking a tower advantage right here. GBM is okay, close to six now, about two-thirds of a level out, so... It's going to change things Oops. Oh, he got the it. side lanes. He's missing some CS, though. Yeah, well, trying to get some damage onto Faker, but it's just not going to work very well against Vlad because he's going to be healing up a little bit. He's going to be dodging a lot of them. Not that one, but a lot of them. Wow. He has dodged the vast majority of the layways that were directed at him. Well, started boot spots, so. Yep. But he hasn't had a chance, even with that forced early recall after that first blood. Now GBM going for a blasting wand before Catalyst. Bold. But he can't abuse Faker before Faker hits level 9. Mm. So. The idea, too, is that if he needs to use that Requiem, he can just add a little bit more damage onto it and help Generic kind of snowball this lead. Okay. So Trace will be Marin up in top. Yeah. Well. Tank battles yet again. Yeah, but Trace has the advantage right here. Two Doran's items and a Ruby Crystal. Yeah, he does for the moment. Also, the nice thing about facing Hecarim is Q, which is Rampage. <laughs> I forgot yep. that that was his Q instead of his, instead of his E. But uh, yeah, his go. Q will make sure that your passive is up quite frequently, so you actually get some good sustain going on there. Uh, Maokai can do well against champions that spam abilities in the laning phase, even if he, he, he does take a lot of damage, but at least there's a little bit of upside. Yep, Pilot finally getting a chance to freeze this lane a little bit and get some more CS. And will we see a dragon from SK Telecom soon? It's going to be tough with the bot lane for Jyn Air there. Can they save this pink ward? Oh, okay, he's going to blind grab Che, actually. Che taking a lot of damage, has to flash away. Chaser's Chaser coming here. in, though. Yep, that's a kill onto Wolf. Bang on the run now. Turning around for another auto onto Pilot. Really greedy right there. Uh, yeah. GBM also had his ult up, and you have to remember that there's oh, yeah. no way for Faker to interrupt Karthus. So I think that was not a good move to try and attack that right there, especially Pilot was already six, he used his ult, and picked up another kill as a result. And they still have Requiem also. So. It's pretty dangerous. I mean, best case scenario there, you trade one for one if you're SKT because even if Wolf survives that, they kill Che, Requiem comes down and he dies, so. Right. 
Well, it's going to be a dragon and uh, taken by Jin They're going to turn on to Bengi now. Faker getting exhausted, but he's going to come in anyway. GBM very, very low, but he's Karthus. It's okay. Still doing damage. Flashes ahead for a little bit more. Bengi goes down. Oh That's two kills for Jin Now they're turning. Here comes Requiem. Can they kill Bang afterwards? He flashes away just in case. They're still going to go, though. Is yeah, the they're going to die. If there's a stun on the Bang, actually, uh, Che may have wanted to save that, but I think they're still no, not going to dive that they quite yet. They can just yet. bottle him up right here. Yep. The wave is coming. Oh, Trace coming what? in, taking a lot of damage. Trace, what are you doing, buddy? Going in way too early. That cost Jenner a couple kills right there. There was no teleport from Marin. They had that 100%. Yeah. Trace just getting a little bit over eager. They, they just had to wait for the wave. Yep, they don't get the turret, they don't get the kills. Huge mistake by Trace there. That was that was a really big misplay by Jin Air. Yeah. And now Marin's gonna get some time to proxy farm under the turret. He's up 20 CS as a result. Yeah. And that tower taking a ton of damage in the top side. That was a pretty massive error by Trace in the bot lane. Wow. A little bit of miscommunication for Jin Air. It costs him big time. Interesting. I was really surprising that he would do that after they already picked up those kills right around the dragon. Yeah, it's not a not something that you would dragon do a lot. fight again. So, Bengi tries to delay them as long as possible, but Faker gets stunned right at the start of this run. GBM manages to stay alive for a surprisingly long time. Gets the flash for Bang, and then he'll force one out of Bang as well with the requiem. He gets a bit too low. And we, as we uh, move forward right here, there are only three people on the map. Yeah, the wave was coming. And Trace just decides to twist the advance in there. Wow. Whoops. And they used two summoners for that, too. Heal and Trace's Flash. Yikes. Yeah, it was not good. Don't really know what was going on right there. Miscommunication. Oh, Faker slowed down with that Wall of Pain. He's going to pop the Hemo Plague anyway. Might be in trouble. There's a Cataclysm. Yeah, yeah, Faker, he's not getting out of that. There's a kill for GBM. GBM with a pretty good start on this Karthus as well. 3-1-1 so far. Call by Chaser. That's the problem with this Vlad against Jarvan. Yep. Is it's like Vlad versus Zareth. There's nothing you can do. And yeah, it's just, and you only have that single target too. The problem, it, it's even worse with Vlad because at least as Zareth, you can do some line damage or you can shoot outside of the pit. But basically with Vlad, if you just stand far enough away and poke Vlad while he's in there, all he can do is use Transfusion. And that is awful. Yep. No CC to speak of. <laughs> it's pretty rough. But amazing fingernails. Fabulous. In a freaky way. Fabulous fingernails. Yeah. Well, Marin, it does have, the, the hope right now is Marin and his split pushing capabilities. He's gonna be, feel pretty comfortable with that big CS lead. He's got a kill already. Even though Bang has a couple, he went for just the Greaves for wave clear pretty quickly here. Yeah. Oh, Marin, taking a lot of damage here. No mana either, so he can't stick around. <laughs> Escapes the seedling, though. But he can rock out on his sweet guitar. Yep. GBM could have rocked out as well, too, if he would have picked the Pentakill Kartha skin. But he didn't. So I need to, need to keep abusing Faker while he has no flash. Cataclysm. It's going to be back up soon. Will they go for another gank on the mid lane? Uh, they've got kill pressure in all lanes right now, so this yeah. is a good situation for Jyn'Air to be in. Bengi's going to have to play very cautiously. We see those Sentinels going out for Kalista. Faker not even Kalista, with that word of the agents. Kalista yeah. also, um, Oops. maybe one of the reasons why she got tier two boots is she needs those to jump out of Cataclysm and she doesn't have flash. Oh yeah, could be. You actually have to have tier two boots to jump that wall. Interesting. That is true. Well, Janair with a pretty good chance here. Although it is still a fairly close game. Marin is being as annoying as possible. This is really smart of Marin. He wants to just drive pressure into the top lane. If he dies right now, it's not that big of a deal. He has teleport up and can immediately get back into lane. Yeah. So He's gotten a huge if, lead, too. If he can force Chaser to come up there, it's actually good for SK Telecom in this moment where it is a bit dicey for them. Yeah, they, There are a lot of opportunities for Jenner to get kills right now. Yep, they're going to try to do it in bot lane here. We'll see if it works. Bang coming down. Ooh, yeah, you need to be so careful. They know a bunch of, uh, uh, there we go, Sentinel coming it's in. It's not going to see them. It's not going to see them. Oh, it sees Chaser, though. They walked out of the brush. Oh, OK, interesting. 
Well, nice try. I think yeah. actually they could have avoided being seen if they hadn't walked out of the brush. They could have actually, I think, squeezed around the side of a vision based on the angle. Dragon in 40 seconds now. First one did go to Jinair. So will SK be able to, or SK Telecom be able to set up enough of a team fight to contest this one? Yeah, Jinair deciding to go for double Rod of Ages this game, so a lot of stacking early. So they, they really have changed their tactic. I mean, you have a lot of item choices that you can make on. Oh, Onslaught of Shadows, they get the flash out of Trace. Good trade for the ult. Yeah, you, you have a lot of you have a lot of choices you can make on Maokai and Karthus, obviously, but going for a double rod is the one you want to have the most punch in the late game. Wow, Trace is playing this really risky, actually. Yeah, I mean, look at this Banky coming around from behind. He just used his, tra his uh, flash. I don't know what Trace was thinking here. I don't think he's going to make it out of this one. Twisted advance back onto Marin. Marin a little bit low health, but Benki, they should be able to focus him down. And this is right before Dragon. Dragon is up. Is Requiem enough? No, not quite. GBM and the rest of Jinair, though, able to claim that Dragon. So SKT did end up trading a kill in the top lane for the Dragon. You have teleports still, so it's not the end of the yeah. world. And that CS lead hasn't gotten any bigger. Uh-oh. Oh, stun on the bang, and he has completely caught. There's a the Cataclysm, flashes away. It's not enough. Wolf on the run now in Jin area. Yeah, a little bit too dangerous to follow that one. Uh, Faker's just going to take the Rift Scuttler right now. He's actually on an invade. They want to dive this as soon as Marin comes back, or Trace comes back up, but he's not going to use TP. So they won't so. have an opportunity. Hmm. They were hoping Trace would TP to lane right there. So right there, that map movement was saying, if he TPs the lane, we're going to kill him and dive the turret. Or, and kill the turret. If he doesn't TP, we're going to kill the turret. So that was actually really smart by SKT. They covered all their bases right there. True enough. So they get that turret regardless for that dragon. It's nice. Very nicely done. But they're going to trade turrets in the end. Yeah. It, you know, it just doesn't seem wise that SKT just allowed Jinair to have that second dragon as well, too. It seems very risky. Well, they decided to make the play up top, so they... They made a decision that they would be giving it up if GBM and the rest of uh, Jin Air were ready. And the fact that GBM popped Requiem right while they were doing it, too, meant that everybody was chunked. So any fight that comes out of that is very difficult. It's true. Marin was low enough. So Trace takes the hit for the team. But Trace doesn't have to worry so much about being behind early. Yeah, he's still going to be a big tank late game. Nothing's really going to stop that from happening. But can SKT, you know, risk any more dragons going to Jinair? I feel like it's when you hit three stacks, that's when it starts to get a little bit iffy in that you're going to be fairly close to five. Yeah, we're so even in this game, though. Yeah. And Bang is going to be going, oh, man, looks like maybe he'll go Ghost Blade. Hmm. Okay, well, quick push for Jinair. They managed to take another outer. No defense at the bottom side. Trace really being... Very conservative with his teleport usage this game. Yeah, they're just going to trade turrets again, so now it's 2-2. Two to two. Trace is really worried that he's going to get dove. He thinks he's going to get dove every oh, time. Oh, flash on Amar, and there's the stun. Oh. There's the Cataclysm. They caught him in the end of his ult. But here comes Faker to turn this one around. They still got the kill on Amar, but Faker going TP. deep. Can they get the damage? There's the stun coming in from Jay again. He flashes ahead. Can't get a double kill now for Turning Pilot. Meanwhile, Wolf in big trouble underneath the turret. Jin is not done yet. There's the box. Not going to stop anything. So three kills and wow. a turret going to Jin Air. That was a pretty big mistake for Faker to follow that one, it looks like. Well, uh, he just doesn't have that damage yet, and the turnaround was so good from yeah. Jin Air, kiting out beautifully They didn't even that have engage. Requiem for that, too. No, they, they didn't. They didn't need it. GBM no. was there at the right time. Look how many wards are in topside as well. Jin Air absolutely lighting up the jungle. They'll take a Tier 2 as a result. Yeah, they can't recall right there. Yeah, well, Marin. or maybe there's an ult. Marin coming in over the top. A lot of damage on the pilot. GBM's a lot of damage on the J, but look at all that burst. GBM. Able well, that was uh, a favorable trade for right. them at the very least. Yeah, they got the bot lane. GBM wasn't quite able to turn it around. They lost Marin that again, was a, though. That was a good response. One for two? For SK Telecom. But GBM really scary right now. Four, one, and two at Karthus by 18 yeah. minutes. He goes back, picks up, and completes his uh, Zonia's Hourglass. Well, right now, Pilot is actually doing a decent amount of damage, too, so. Oh, yeah. It seems I mean, a Graves bit... is so bursty early yeah. on. 
Can't wait to see that replay, actually. And Bang, is he going Shiv for wave clear? What is he doing? They have very low range wave clear this game. It's a big problem for SKT. They have melee wave clear basically right now, unless Bang gets a Shiv, because Vlad's wave clear is pretty short range, like this, to walk up to the wave. Yep. Thank you for the demonstration, Faker. Yeah. Get close enough to suck the blood, because he's a, va I mean, a hemomancer. <laughs> Not a vampire. Okay. Well, SK Telecom already trying to set up around drag. Really good early drag setups for both teams in this game so far. In both the well, both these games. Yeah, well, they've got two so far. And GBM is really been showing up on this Karthus. Yeah. It's the second the second game now where we've seen him play it really well. The one concern for Jyn Air is that by buying this static shiv, do you set yourself too far behind in the late game? Yeah, you've got some really good burst, but Phantom Dancer, really quite good. You want to do some work there. Try and use oh, Fate's Call. Fate's Call, and uh, work. well, it was ambitious. It was an ambitious attempt, but not going to land that death sentence. No TPs up, and Mar or Trace is here. Marin is still top, actually taking Krugs right now. Uh, Bang picked up a Quicksilver Sash as well, too, so. Oh, man, he's not going to do any damage. Yeah. Well, he's useless, pretty much. I guess so. And do, do you really, I suppose you need it against Annie, you need it against uh, Maokai, I suppose, theoretically, as well, too, but. Yeah, well, they don't even have to focus him right now. Honestly, yeah. Jyn is in, now in a particularly good position because Hecarim's still pretty squishy. Yeah, you'd think that Bang would just be going for more and, damage at this point. Okay, you have QSS, but Graves can just unload with collateral damage on your team, and he's going to do way more than Bang will with that yep. QSS. Well, they're really going to be counting on Bangy, Marin, and Faker to sort of keep people occupied while Bang does damage. But Faker also went Spirit Visage over going for Zonia's. Not sure I agree with that either. Mm. Yeah, his sustain's going to be good. So SKT basically saying that they want to outlast the opposition. That's the way they're going to win team team fights. But I don't. I really don't think that's going to happen. Well, Jinair trying to move for, towards their third dragon right now. Marin with the flank, but he doesn't have TP, so he can't home guard. Coming in, there we go, ult from Bengi. Can they follow it up? Dragon actually taken by Jin Air anyway. Cataclysm goes down, Faker in the middle of everybody doing a lot of damage with that Hemo flag. And meanwhile in the back, Bang chasing GBM down the river. Faker still alive for now, finally goes down. GBM picking up a kill there, but over the wall comes Wolf with a big play after that Fates call. Bang, still full health, and SKT is gonna win this team fight, what or they? they might pay for it. <laughs> Requiem only gets GBM one kill, and that is an ace for two. Three wow. dragons for Jyn Air, but so, SKT played that pretty perfectly. It, Chaser stayed in the dragon pit for way too long right there. They got the dragon, but what price is it going to cost them? Because he wasn't there to create the necessary zones to keep his team alive. Bang's going to get the turret, so watch this. Chaser's going to stay in the back line right here. Great ult from Bengi. Look at that chemo plate, too, on four members. Really good. Chaser gets it, but Chaser has to use Cataclysm. That's a really traps more members of his own team than anything else. Yeah. Actually, that Cataclysm was awful. And that was the main problem, is Chaser just couldn't do anything. If he had been able to Cataclysm at the front of that fight, I think it's an easy win for Jin Air, but Chaser there, focusing on that dragon. It's actually amazing that Wolf didn't die to the, how did he live through the Requiem? Just barely did. I think, I think they used Summoner Heal, actually. Oh yeah, could be. Oh, meanwhile, a little bit of a fight near this blue buff barn, a little bit of trouble. They get the death sentence onto GBM. That allows for the disengage. And so SKT not getting the blue buff, but they do make it out with their life. Yeah. Wow, tying up Maokai on their front line in the dragon pit was really bad for Jyn Air. Really bad. Yeah. Was... That gave Bang a lot of gold. He's got his static shiv done now. A little bit more damage, but... Still not that much, but still, I mean, if you can have a fight like that, he was untouched in that fight. Yes, yeah, well, of course, all the front line was stuck inside Cataclysm. <laughs> yep, well, that's just what SKT is going to have to try to get to have happen, right? They need to recruit Chaser. <laughs> he came over to the dark side that last fight, but see what happens. 
Faker able to get quite a boost as well, too. Still an extremely close game. Kind of the big story here, I think, is that Jin Air was still able to get that Dragon, so they do have three. Now that is very important. Obviously, Faker moving his attention to the side lanes. I'll be interested to see what he gets next. Hopefully, he's going to get that Zonia's Hourglass. I mean, SK Telecom running on very low damage comps tonight overall, but they're making it work just through the extreme tankiness that they are bringing into this into these games. Yeah, they don't have the burst, but they've got the sustain. Yeah, the issue that they face, though, is they still do have to go all in against a Karthus, and that is highly damaging to them, even with this locket. True. Trying to set up a pick, not going to work. Difference between Trace and Mar in this game is absolutely massive, though. Trace has taken a lot of hits for the team so far. Yeah, not quite the tanky Maokai they need him to be just yet. Doesn't even have that frozen heart done. Only the Glacial Shroud. Jinair is still very much in this, though. But it's slipping. It's slipping just a bit. Well, at least, if you're Jinair, at least you can choose how this game goes. You have the massive Dragon lead, so... There's not so much pressure on you from that front. Yeah, I mean, Jin Air, no stranger to the super late game. They can give SKT a couple of the dragons just to kind of get themselves back into it item-wise. Yeah. And wait out, because Hecarim just isn't as useful as Maokai in the late game. That 20% yeah. damage reduction that Maokai gives you is so good, especially against you know, Faker, who's going to be trying to pump up his team's damage with the Hemoplague. It's a very good counter to neutralize Vlad. I mean, I think you do have to consider the scary aspect of SKT getting that first dragon, though, getting that 6% AP and AD. At this point in the game, that actually is a pretty big damage boost for that team. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Especially against a tanky team like this. It's like Pilot maybe going for a Bloodthirster as his next item, just to give him even more burst and try and make him a bit safer to getting caught out. Well, it's KT trying Pilot to also with here. the QSS, by the way. Now. OGBM, OGBM. The oh, Bengi comes in, he throws the ult, he gets a slow on GBM at least. And there's a the death sentence. This could be bad. Gang by Mob. Zonia's doing a lot of damage. Jay comes in, tries to get the stun off. Faker exhausted, but in the middle of the fight, Cataclysm canceled immediately. Pilot, very low health. Oh, flash death sentence for a wolf. And that's going to be a kill onto the AD carry of Jin Air. Meanwhile, Trace alone in the back lines with the rest of SKT, and they are going to win another team fight. No kills from that Requiem. SKT getting farther ahead. Yeah, so close. Benki and Wolf to going down, but the cleanup was great. Wolf oh boy. hit a great death sentence yes, right there to turn it around. And now... A couple of them, actually. SK Telecom coming in for this Baron. Jay up, back up right now, but Trace a long time down. No TP. Faker just pushing the lane, making sure his team can get the Baron. And they're going to get yeah, it. Yeah, they will, and they're not going to kill Faker either. There we go. Baron Huge taken. Huge turn right there. Yep. Maybe should have just let GBM die. Uh, Pilot and Che went in immediately. Trace hit the teleport quite quickly, but he's just not tanky enough quite yet. He went for the cowl as his next item. Yeah. Faker now building into Zonya's Hourglass, and Faker got right into the back line and cut people off from helping GBM. Yeah, SKT has just been playing all these team fights extremely well. Oh man, they've got Baron. Now they're going to get that first dragon and get that big damage boost at this point in the game. 6% AD and AP is a lot when you're 27 minutes in. So SKT with a team fight win, a Baron, and that first dragon. Now, huge, huge boost. Fortunately for Jin Air, the SKT's composition is really bad at sieging. So they can hold on here. The wave clear is good. True. It's the split push with Hecarim that they have to be the most concerned with. Yeah, and losing team fights. Can't do that anymore. Yeah, Marin looking pretty strong on this Hecarim right now. Oh yeah, he's he's completed three core items to one yep. of Trace. Well, SKT is just going to walk right up and take this mid lane turret, it looks like. Who's the lantern for? Nobody. <laughs> just for the sweet shields. Yeah. And that's the 1-3-1, one, one. of course. Vlad had an excellent split pusher as well, so oh, yeah. SK Telecom definitely playing this out correctly. I'm gonna take the blue buff too. Vlad is such a terror in terms of split pushing in the late game. Yeah, Faker building towards that Zonia's now, but just mechanically, he's done a lot with this Vladimir. 
not the best KDA, but he's really been effective in team fights. I want to see that team fight again. I don't know if we're going to get a chance. I wish we could too, Monty. Makes me sad. But I, I, I need to see it to know why it went that way. Uh, besides the besides the hook coming in and the the early pick as well, and then the follow up hook. Wolf is Wolf has been really good. Oh yeah, man, two great death sentences in that last team fight. One onto GBM to start it off, and then over the wall to hit the one on Pilot. Really spectacular thresh game. Last whisper finish now for Bang. So the damage is getting up there with this Callista now. Yeah, you can see he's a core item up. Yeah. So he'll have that. Strength advantage in these team fights, and yeah, Janair looks like they're going to get O2 here. A bit disappointing. I mean, Janair just can't quite quite catch a break. They played a very close series up against GE, yeah, and also got 2 0 but it was a very close 2 0 and so has it been this series so far. Yeah, I mean, Janair has the capacity to beat any team in this league, but not consistently. You know, it's gonna yeah. if you had like maybe four best of threes, we could probably beat SKT in one or two of them, you know? But when it's one best of three, it's a little bit tougher. Onslaught of Shadows used to go in onto Trace here. Trace uses the ultimate. Shea coming in. I don't think Marin's going to be able to get a kill off of this. No, nope, not quite. But it's a split push pressure yep. that they're worried about it. You know, I think what this does, though, is just really solidify our top three, right? And maybe even our top four. Jin Air looks better than CJ. SKT looks better than Jin Air, GE. You know, at this point, it's actually kind of tough to tell, in my opinion, where I they agree. stand with SKT. But we do know that Jin Air, I think, is a solid third place in the I league right now. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah, SKT versus GE is going to be great. This has been a good match, too. But I've been so impressed with Jin Air at level one. Their early game plans are so airtight. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, is that if they're able to sort of tighten up the other parts of the game, this is a team that will yeah. beat everyone. It's And it's so, it's, when we're talking about games like this, it's very minor mistake. If Chaser yeah. had played that dragon fight better and not Cataclysm and his own teammates in there, Jin Air would probably have a massive lead right now. They were looking so good up until that point. Wow. <laughs> Bengi, trying to kill Pink Wards in the base. Why not, you know? Hop over that wall on Sejuani. Got the yep. lantern to bail you out if you need to. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing is that if this is a 2-0, which it's kind of looking like it might be, it's not a close 2-0. It's just like the GE series. Jin Air playing well, just like barely not enough. Yep, indeed. Well, SKT playing a little bit of the waiting game right here because of that early dragon deficit. It may take a while for them to actually close, considering their best option is that 1-3-1 one, one with Hecarim and Vlad. Yeah, but they can wait it out. I mean, they can be confident in winning a lot of the team fights right now, and so they can kind of just keep loading up on dragons, barons. Yeah, you have enough magic and resist to deal with GBM also before he gets That's Void right. Staff. GBM is really far away from Void Staff. He has no magic pen at the moment. Besides what he's got in Roots and Masteries. Yeah. yeah, everybody on SKT right now having a good amount of magic resistance. Yeah, good builds from SKT all around, I think. Yep. And Faker coming into this series and just building very defensive items for the most part, showing the power of these more grindy team compositions and taking advantage of the tankiness of the current meta. And Well, SKT is just so scary. I mean, they've tr they seem to have transitioned so seamlessly into 5.5 that... Uh, this is kind of what I expected. Yeah, you really got to wonder if it's going to be SKT winning the finals this season. I mean, we're not even in the playoffs yet, but this is such the a, way things are going, I don't this know. This is such a good meta for their play style. Oh, yeah. Very true. Goodbye, Rift Coward. Well, minute till Baron, 45 until Dragon. And uh, Jin is going to need to leave their base sometime. Oh, Thorn Mail on Marin. He, he got so very ahead this game. He's on yeah. the cusp of the flame horizon right now. Three CS away. Four uh, CS away. Five CS away. Yep. Three, four. Uh, he's, he's very close. He's very close. <laughs> oh, there he goes. All right. The flame horizon has been broken by Marin. 100 CS ahead of his lane opponent, Trace. And Trace lost to CS, a lot of CS to Tourist because he was so afraid of Bengi diving him if that wave hit at the same time he walked up. Yep. And he also took a hit because he was the one who participated in that gank in the mid lane 
of Faker, but that just hasn't turned into much. Faker may be 2-5-5 five, and five this game, but he's still able to be a pretty impactful player in a lot of these team fights. Yep, and now uh, they can take Dragon and they can walk right up and take Baron as well too. Jinair may want to try to contest it, but... They have to. That's going to be tough. Oh, Chaser, you smite right there. It'll be back up, though. Yep. Well, it's just that 15-second cooldown if you've got two charges. That's right. Which I do like that change. It's a great Pretty change. Cool. Yep. Really good change. Well, it's kind of necessary with all the, the uh, jungle enchants now. New weapons, you need it. Oh, all right. Just use his second smite right there. Though. Okay, that wasn't very smart, because SKT is starting this Baron right now, and it looks like Janera is saying, all right, we're just going to go for the ultra, ultra late game if we can, but... Despite the lack of siege for SK Telecom right now, I think they're still going to have enough to start pushing into the base. Yeah, they probably will, Doa. They probably will. Unopposed Baron. Wow. Okay. Mercurial Scimitar for uh, Bang now. There's another BF sword in the inventory. Yeah, Pilot just lagging so far behind at this point as well. Yeah. Where are they going to go? It, oh, Void Snap is done. That's actually very important for GBM. Maybe he can actually pick up some kills with Requiem now. Considering that most people haven't built any more magic resistance the last time they team fought. It's true. Here we go. Going to come into a little bit of damage to that mid lane turret. Jinair needs to try to defend this. They get the cannon minion. But the split push, the 1 3 1, doing work. Faker, they're going to go in onto him. Back away pretty easily, though. Look how much heal he has at this Seriously. point. You can't stop this split push. That's the thing, is this is such a good 1-3-1 one, one with the Baron buff. Any trade you make is just foiled immediately by Hecarim and Vladimir heals. Look at this, yep. you just walk up to the door, he doesn't even care. Nope, any damage he takes, he just immediately gets the health right back again. Oh no, a stun. Wow, SKT. They've got the tools they need. They played it safely. And they're closing this one out very methodically, very effectively. And what does Jinair do? There's just really nothing they can they can do right now. Nope. Oh, they're going to go in on Trace. Trace backing away. That's going to give them the turret. Now the inhibitor at risk. GBM has already taken some damage. Will Che get a nice stun in here? It's not going to save the inhibitor. Nice ult from Bengi. On that Sejuani, there goes inhibitor number one. Meanwhile, that's another one going down as well. Jin Air just pushed back into their base. Are they even going to fight this? They have to try, but they're losing their second inhibitor right now. And SKT on the verge of taking this one 2-0. SKT has closed this game so well. Yeah. Fighting back from that deficit. Here we go. Here we Coming go. in. Hemo Plague activated. Marin comes in with the Onslaught of Shadows. GBM tries to get back in the fight. SKT taking some decent damage. Bengi low. Pilot has not been touched yet. No, now he has been. Here comes SKT. Requiem comes down. Is it enough? A triple kill for GBM. And suddenly Faker has to back off. This one not over quite yet. Nice flash. flash. Knock up. Can they lock him down? They don't quite get him with the twist advance. There's a flash from Faker. They're going to have to let him go. That was a good last stand, actually. No <laughs> kidding. Well, sometimes Karthus just presses R, man. What can well, you say? That's that Void Staff difference yeah, that seriously. I was talking about. He had Void Staff. He had Sword Shoes that time. So suddenly, his uh, Magic Pen really amping up in that last team fight. It made a world of difference. You Are know, they going to be able to defend in this game? Probably not. But let's take a look at this one again. Not the best. Hemo Plague there from Faker did hit the trigger a little bit too early. Also, look how much damage GBM does with Defile. He hits nearly everybody for that entire engagement right there. Bang gets Boom. obliterated. <laughs> Man, Pilot was able to get a lot of good uh, attacks in there anyway. His damage may be a bit lower, but he had plenty of time to do it. Two inhibitors down, though, before Jinair was able to win that fight, so it's still dire straits. Yeah, Faker will get his Void Staff down, too. That's another big item purchase complete for him. True. Another BF sword for Bang, because why not? And Mikhail's close to being done for Wolf now. But with the QSS on the AD carry already, it's not as vital. So you want to place bets on how long it is until we see Zillion in the current meta? Hopefully not too long. I, I really like the new Zillion. And they lowered the... Uh, Cooldown on his Q in the last patch, too. Yeah, think about this ultra tanky meta. That's what happens. Zillion returns every time. Yep. <laughs> yep. Gets to bring people back. 
the zoning that you can do with his bombs now is, is very, very cool. And, you know, delivering the bomb on a Hecarim or something sounds like fun to me. Yeah, I love the zillion changes. SKT coming back. Trying uh, again. Baron buff gone now, of course. Less than a minute until Dragon, though. Marin is like two core items up on Trace. So this is a really hard battle for Trace to win right here. Yeah, he's just hanging out in the base right now, just keeping the super minion waves pushing. And here comes SK Telecom. Just bulldozing their way in. There goes the inhibitor turret. Now they're going after the inhibitor Jinair again. has to engage. Trace needs to do something. And Requiem just came up for GBM. It is time. Huge ult from Bengi, though. Pilot stayed out of it. Can he do enough damage? Nemo Plague goes down. GBM in the middle. Pops that zone. Bengi's going to get taken out. Wolf and the rest of SKT already backing out. Here comes Requiem. Is it enough? Tippers no missed. kills. Tippers did miss. Faker still jumped on. Able to pull out of that one. They're going to turn around again. Pilot in the middle of everything goes down. And SKT, I think that's what they needed to end this one right here. Chase is going to get taken out. There's a double kill for Bang and Chaser. You're running the wrong way, buddy, man. Your base is the other direction. Faker's going to pick up another kill eventually. Well, I think the rest of his team's just going to go in. There we go. There's the ace. And SK Telecom, despite the valiant effort from the Jin Air Green Wings, will be able to close this one out 2-0. Jin Air a solid third place. And SK Telecom, after tonight, Watch out, GE Tigers. This was uh, it's looking like a serious match coming up here. Yeah, it will be at the end of this season. We'll see how yep. we'll see how both of these teams actually take it, Doha, because now as long as SK Telecom win their next match against Samsung, they will be locked into second place. GE locked into first place. How willing will they be to show their strategies? I'm I'm not sure that's going to be a great game, really. Well, we'll see. I mean, Samsung is, uh, you know, not exactly the greatest team, so I don't think SKT is going to have to really show a whole lot to beat them. But Jin Air, again, it's a tough loss for these guys. Another pretty valiant effort. It was a 2-0, yeah, but it was another close 2-0 for really Jin Air. Close. You know, I think, it, like we said earlier, it just solidifies Jin Air as the third-place team in Korea. Yeah, and uh, SKT fighting. Indeed, yeah. they were. They fought quite well tonight. He got his wish, man. SKT with the 2-0. I hope Wolf gets MVP after that. Wolf was very good that match. Oh, man, his death sentences were pretty spectacular. Yeah, I, you know, I think you could make an argument for Marin as well, too. Well, with that, though, you know, we do see SKT and Jin Air split 1-1 on the season. Uh, both matches 2-0, actually. So this yeah. time, SKT gets the upper hand. So you have Jin Air adapts. Hopefully, we'll see some changes to these AD carries where they are more effective against